Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Are you looking to hire a tech professional? With ZipRecruiter, you can post to 100 plus job boards, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. And by video blocks, by story blocks. Uncage your creativity. Get all the stock video you need for only $149 a year. Visit videoblocks.com slash Android to save on millions of studio quality clips from video blocks. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android. This is episode number 340, recorded on Tuesday, October 24th, 2017. We're your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Florence. Yeah, you are. And right in between us is not Ron Richards. He is not here today. This evening, he is absent. Do we say what he's absent for? Why? We didn't discuss that. Okay, you're right. We didn't. <laughs> hmm. so, okay, maybe Ron we'll tell is you enjoying later. Some much needed time off right now. It's true. He did so say. We that- ask that you please respect his time <laughs> of being alone. <laughs> yeah, we, we probably should have uh, discussed this with him. I do know that we're allowed to say that he's on a beach enjoying himself. Precisely. Which is I, honestly, I would love to be on a beach. Really, I've been like thinking about when I can get to snow. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. So in pre-show, you mentioned that you're you're planning some sort of a trip. I'm uh, trying to the, look at a vacation where to go for the winter. winter. But and then you mentioned uh, a like place mentioned that Montana. feels a little too wintry for like vacation during the winter. Like I I assumed you would be trying to escape the cold. But we we don't live in the East Coast. We don't have to escape anything. We live in California. We're true. we are so spoiled here. We should be going out <laughs> and enjoying what everybody else has to offer that we don't get. That's and true. anyway, Tahoe is so crowded. Yeah. It's so crowded now. Oh, it can be. Tahoe so yesterday. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, people travel from all over I know, to Tahoe. Just, um, We're just like, oh, whatever. That's our backyard. Uh, we are. Um, yeah. we've, we've got quite a show. We do have we're, a we're show, hanging. actually. You, we you do. You might also notice that there is no TV here. It's just Flo and I. We're, we're like, you know rip. what? Sometimes we just got to go solo. Yeah. We got to flow solo. Yeah. It's 90 degrees outside here in Petaluma. <laughs> which is weird. Which is partly why I'm like, let's go to the snow. Yeah, uh, I but I'm still feeling summery, so I feel like this is good. We're in a summery mood. All right, all right. You know, we've got a lot of drama to talk about, controversy, which is so summer, heating up the airwaves of the so internet. So summer, I know. Uh, we're going to be discussing display quality control issues. Doesn't that just ooze summer drama. to you? It's uh, like Dynasty with, with Pixel Two XL, which is a story that I feel like has been going mad for the past, I don't know, five days or so over the weekend. Uh, that's a long weekend, by the way. A month with the Note 8. I've been using the Note 8 now for almost a full month. Oh, good. And there's a reason why. We'll talk about that. Oh, great. You've also been spending time with the Note 8, so you've got thoughts, right? Yeah, well, more on the V30. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, well, we'll, we'll talk we'll, about that. We'll in compare the next and contrast. Block. Uh, pay with Google. Is now a Which thing. Which I actually, well, I'll talk about that. Yes, hold on to it. <laughs> DNS over TLS. We'll explain what those letters mean. Essential has a big price drop and a whole lot more. Before we dive in, we've got some important stuff to get to. Due Flo, to popular demand, I found a box of the mystery Oreos. We've th- received a lot of tweets about these. Yeah. And I got some snaps about them too, which thank you for those of you who are still on Snapchat. Uh, <laughs> wow, Snapchat is it that much of an you. abandoned uh, platform? No, no, no. I'm oh, just, okay. I am so happy now that people like, yeah. Um, okay. nice anyway, snap. so we've got mystery Oreos here. I've heard a couple of people say they sound, uh, they taste like fruity pebbles. Okay, don't don't, um, don't pollute the airwaves. Oh, shoot, um, with, you're with, right. With I'm these, totally uh, polluting. With these references, because oh, no. we've never tasted them. Is, Although you read it, so, you know, that would already be in did. there. But what is the deal behind mystery Oreo? Because I know a lot of people sent this as a limited edition. Apparently, you don't know the flavor, but you can win some money or whatever. Uh, well, I guess that's you the can deal. win $50,000 okay. actually if you see the back for details. And five first prize winners will receive $10,000. The way to enter is to text mystery to a number and then mm-hmm. follow the link to submit your guess. Okay. Or you can go to oreomystery.com and submit your guess. That's uh, too complicated. 
you can enter without making a purchase or guessing the correct flavor, which seems can, if the winner ends up being definitely a contest for millennials it's a it's, if you can actually win this by not actually playing whatsoever by the rules then that's pretty lame i mean come but on anyways, that's a trophy for like participation that's true it totally is Boo. all right so here I'll, I'll pull it over to this this little uh camera that we have right yes. over here because you've got to see it, are they bright pink what color well, I think they no, just look they like just, Oreos. They just kind of look like Oreos. We should smell these ones. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll do that. Let's smell them. Oh I re uh, immediately, I don't like the smell. You should put them down by your side, though, because I know the smells studio like wants to share. It smells like rum. Oh, it does. It totally smells it like does. rum. No, it's, it... Huh? It totally does smell like Fruity Pebbles. Oh, it Like, I is just dumped is? the cereal in the bowl. I'm about to pour milk on top oh, of them. Too. Mm -hmm. Wait, what did you say they they smelled rum. like? Rum. Rum? Um, yeah, I totally get the Fruity Pebbles. Um, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's the thing. Although I could kind of see it. Is Fruity Pebbles a, uh, a Nabisco thing? Or Fruit Loops. Excuse me, Fruit Loops. Eric Duckman. Oh my God, these Scooter are access. so fruity. I don't like it. Three. These are really this, fruity. They do. They really do taste like fruity pebbles. Sorry, I'm eating the mic. Yes, loops. they really do. Okay. We will make sure, Victor, that you get one of these delightful cookies. I'm going to shove it oh, the rest of the Oh, he already mouth. has one. You'd be wise not to eat it. Okay. Uh, with that said, it's time for the news. Here's something you want burned into your screen. Here's Jason and Flo with Android News. Yeah, we'll burn that into your screen. We're going to burn this news into your screen, except that we're not going to start with the big news. I don't know why I, when I set this up, I didn't start with top stories. Sorry, I'm like, I desperately need water. Keep talking. Okay, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> dive, jump Oreos. right into it. So we're going to get to the screen stuff with the Pixel, and we've got some Pixels in hand, so we're going to show those to you, but not yet. You've got to get through these stories first. And hey, there's some pretty cool stuff here. First things first, Google continues to push sites towards extra security. Uh, as you may remember, Chrome, you know, they've, they've been pushing towards this extra security with HTTPS encryption for sites. If sites actually do that, they get a handy little green icon lock or lock icon in the URL bar, and that's all great. Uh, but now, according to updates that are hitting the AOSP, and spotted originally by XDA developers, Android will soon support TLS, which stands for Transport Layer Security, uh, for DNS, domain name server. So DNS queries will be encrypted similar to what you get through HTTPS. It would prevent hackers uh, from taking control of DNS, the domain name um, server, to spy or misdirect to phishing sites, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Did you just bring milk? No, you brought water. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought this was like delayed milk delivery <laughs> by Burke. Uh, either way, thank you, Burke. Uh, and it would not fully obscure websites visited from ISPs. So there's a lot of people that are thinking, oh, well, this, you know, this would mask where you go from ISPs. VPN would still mm -hmm. be the assured way mm -hmm. to do that. And that's mainly because it requires the DNS that you connect to to support DNS over TLS. So if that happens then you've got an extra layer of security. So I think that's a good thing. So it's a, effectively the mobile answer to HTT, HTTPS. Well, yeah, is but- Is what I'm understanding. It's, well, it, it offers encryption like HTTPS applied to the domain name server. Sometimes okay. the domain name server can be a tell as far as, you know, signaling mm -hmm. uh, to a telco what sites you're visiting. At the very least, they could have that information and know that's where you're going when, when they- um, when they pick apart the DNS and find out where that's redirecting to. Um, this is one way around that. But there there needs to be extra support on the DNS side in order for it to uh, to actually protect you from anything. But I think that's that's good. It basically symbolizes that, you know, Google continues to kind of take uh, customer security seriously from this perspective. Maybe they're making up for, you know, other things and <laughs> doing what they can, I guess, is what it's, what it's all about. Yeah, but so it says here it'll appear in the developer options. So it's making me think it's not, it's not for prime time yet. It's yes. kind of in. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it, from what I understand from the XDA article is that it will appear in the developer options menu initially. Maybe eventually that'll get moved out. But then. I guess there needs to be a little bit of education for the general user, which is like, I why do I need that? I don't think you need to have education. I think you just you have just, the developers 
help you with the bugs, enable it in the background, and everybody's safe. Uh, and do it by default. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. That's probably the right that's way it. to that's go. That's it. That's the easy way to do it. Don't that's... ask me to do anything on my end, please. That is a really good point. Um, so there we go. More secure. Yeah. So speaking of doing things on my end, a cool thing that I got to do the other day is I got to pay for the parking meter with Android Pay. With Android Pay. With Android Pay. Okay. Which was because of the new Pay with Google oh. API that was announced this summer. Uh, it, this summer over at Google I.O., I guess if you count May as summer. Uh, the I do. It taps into Apparently because I wrote it. it. Yeah, again, the California privilege. Uh, you tap into the Google Pay API. You've got your credit and debit cards there that you've set up uh, on the device. I notice that this is device specific because I only have one debit card set up on my V30, whereas I have like all my cards set up on another phone. But yeah, only the cards you have set up uh, inside the app on that specific phone. It uh, can be added via Play, Android Pay, YouTube, and Chrome, all available to use this. When you make a purchase, you will see a prompt that appears, and all you have to do is simply tap it and hit send to pay. It's super easy, just like tapping the phone physically to an NFC-enabled station. It's super quick. It's way easier than typing in your debit card every time you need to pay for parking. Mm-hmm. Um, you nice. know, it's it's a nice little API. Um, it works at 15 places right now at launch. I imagine there's lots of apps that maybe are also integrating this. Uh, sure. Pay by phone, by the way, is the app that I am referring to, which is a parking meter app in so many on the... metropolitan areas. Okay. And they're using the API. Yeah, they, they've got a little list on their page. Oh, they've got Airbnb. They've got uh, Kayak. That, now, the, this bottom area is coming soon. So Coming soon. Okay. Yeah, like like available now, E24, DoorDash, uh, I, I, iFood, Instacart, Wish. There's uh, Postmates. There's a number of them there. Wish and is then, a dangerous one. Be careful with that one, folks. <laughs> coming soon, Papa John's. All the pizza that you like, you can pay for it this way. Papa John's uh, Airbnb. Them. Yeah. Well, hey, you got to start somewhere. I mean. uh, hotel Tonight. <laughs> Everybody starts somewhere. StubHub. They do. Uh, so there you go. New new way to pay, I suppose. Um, I, it's, I mean, I, it's really convenient. I like this. I got into a bind the other night. You know, when I go out, I only I go out with this small little wallet that just has my clipper card, which is my transit card, my debit card, and my driver's license, um, and whatever coupon I need that week. Mm -hmm. I try to travel with nothing else on me because I've had my wallet stolen many times. Wait a minute. Whatever coupon you need that week. Coupon yeah. for what? I plan out my errands, you know, maybe CVS. I have oh. $5 back. Oh, okay. Maybe I have something at Sephora. I mean, I have a coupon. I got to, okay. you know. You got a regular coupon routine. I do. I I, I like coupon. <laughs> I should bring a coupon app into the arena. You really I should. I really should. Cause I, I'm sure there's some good ones. Got to clip the coupons. Coupon clipping is a thing. No, I know it really is. Yes, and it really, you can thing. really game the system. Yeah. No, I know. Uh, actually, Hack Fives, Shannon Morris is a big uh, coupon oh. clipper. And if you follow her on Instagram... I don't know if she still does this, but for a, for a couple of years, she was tweeting out like all these things. Like I, I just envision when you do the couponing thing, you just end up with a garage full of stuff that you may never use. No, it's not that bad. No, no, okay. but you do save some money. Uh, anyway, just to end that, it was <laughs> raining when I used Android Pay. I did not want to exit my car to pay the meter. And I just paid and it right there to. from inside my car. That's and then cool. I just ran to where I was meeting my friends. That's pretty awesome. Excellent. Bravo. Real world testing. That's right. All right. Last month, Google previewed a bunch of new games and experiences aimed at kids uh, via the assistant and by extension, Google Home. Uh, and they're now rolling that out. So this also, in fact, includes voice, something called voice match for kids via Family Link. Now, Family Link is the app and kind of embedded service that you can use to set up devices that are kid that are, that are basically formatted around your kids. So you can place restrictions, limits on those. It's Google's official way of doing that. I use it at home for the for my children's tablets to kind of control their time limits. This is limits. like the video they showed us at Google I.O., yes, right? Yes, so they showed a video okay. at Google I.O. It's now rolling out. I, play, I tested it out a little bit earlier. You can say, okay, gee, uh, let's play a game or what games can we play? And it'll kind of walk you through. You've always been able to do that, but now there's more added to that list. Uh, things like Let's Learn, uh, play space trivia, talk to everyday heroes, help me with my homework. Talk Curious to everyday about. heroes, like Marvel and DC heroes or like good question. John F. Kennedy. 
Because, uh, I mean, heroes could all, be different for everybody. They I should think. all be in there, to be honest. Uh, play Mickey Mouse Adventure. Talk to What's My... So, Talk To is a way of getting third-party developers in there. Talk to What's My Justice League superhero. That's super cute. Uh, Kids are going to love that. Play Sports Illustrated Kids. Tell me a story. Tell me the story of the not-so-scary cat or whatever the story is. And I guess there's a bunch of uh, built-in stories. Play Strangest Day Ever. Play Jungle Adventure. There's a whole bunch of these. But I think probably my favorite way to do this, because as I was looking at this, I was like, okay, 50 plus games and activities. Like, how on earth do you even know that they exist? And like, what what is the easy way to get at these things? Like, where's the list that I can look at? If you say, okay, gee, abracadabra, it's kind of like a random carousel and it'll pull up a thing and it'll describe the game and it'll be like, you know, funny little quote. Uh, now you can play What's My Justice League Superhero? Where are you? Da -da -da. Do you want to play? And then you just say yes and you jump right into it and you play the game. It is worth mentioning that Google tries to do a lot with like their newsletter, you know, that's why you get like a lot of emails from them in your, you know, after you register for a product to yes, kind of help do. like educate the yeah. public about, I mean, I get those newsletters so I can see what's coming out and like every month, I would say every other week, there's a new theme mm -hmm. of like what to do with assistant. But the thing is, it all comes down to the fact that with Assistant, it's one of the, I would say it's one of the virtual assistant platforms that is very consistent in the way it answers me. How do you It's mean? very consistent at understanding me, even when I'm kind of like talking weird. And it's been very consistent at like delivering at what I need. Oh, okay. I say this because it I've been testing, you, well. well, I've been testing Cortana at home with the Harman Kardon right. Invoke. And I have the Amazon Alexa, but I don't really... Not really in that ecosystem, so. I haven't really used Alexa at all. Oh, sorry. We said the name twice. Ooh. Apologies, Victor. Sorry. Um, yeah, I haven't really used any of the other ones. Uh, I, once again, I'm I'm so siloed into. Well, Google because world. well, I just think about <laughs> I just think about all the I just think about all the things that they're adding to it. I yeah. think. Well, I know I know from my own personal experience with kids, like they use the home all the time. Primarily, they probably use it because it's easy to play for them to play music. So they can say, hey, G, play oh, Christina you know, Aguilera. Whatever it is. Yeah. What a girl. Uh, Taylor Swift. Yeah. What, 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 look what you made. Uh, okay, oh, G, play boy. Look What You Made Me Do is by Taylor Swift. Is that what was Swift. going on in your house Oh, lately? believe me. They played they play that song a million times. Once they learned that that's how they asked for that song, they play it all the time. Um, so they, they use it for music, but they also use it to play games occasionally, usually in the morning when we're trying to get ready for school. So it's a little bit of an annoyance. But oh my gosh. still. They do, and they know kind of the process of that, and they love it, like Mad Libs. That's the whole trivia. That's what Google's trying to do, though. They're oh, trying yeah. to trying to train them now as young kids, so that when they become consumers mm -hmm. with their own dollars, they could be like, "I remember when I was a kid, and I was annoying my dad by trying to play a game with Google Home in the morning before going to it's, school." <laughs> it's not it's not weird that I'm playing an actual board game with a humanoid robot, a humanoid robot, because when I was a kid, I used to talk to the Google Home. I mean. I could see something like that happening too. Yeah. Just like for to cure loneliness. Yeah. The evolution. Like those, of it. you know, we already have robots. <laughs> yeah. I see those becoming more commonplace as they try and solve our lonely problem, Absolutely. lonely geriatric problem. Which Absolutely. Makes me sad. We need robots to take us from this. Uh, moving on from robots. Yeah. I guess there's always augmented reality, which is another yeah, kind form of. of it's a stepping stone to it's robots. It's a stepping stone. <laughs> um, of course, what would Sam's, What would a Samsung product be without all of the wonderfulness of Android, other Google Android things? I transitioned into work there. So Google and Samsung <laughs> are partnering up to support AR Core on Samsung devices. Samsung was a launch partner for AR Core with the S8, of course, but this is just a more formal announcement. Uh, and it's, it's just to also show that Samsung isn't on its own doing its own AR yeah. thing. Um, sure, it's got the backing of Oculus for its gear hardware, but still very much is a, it's a, it's a, it's a double device. You can do Oculus VR on it. You can do Daydream on it. And now you can do AR core stuff, which, which is fun, which is good. And anyway, Samsung had to do that if it's going to continually compete with the iPhone. I suppose so. I'm surprised Samsung didn't try its own AR thing. Be like, That's oh, so you, much. We've got, and then eventually, you know, come I, around and implement. Well, AR and I also imagine that at this point, it's like I, 
I just imagine Google's doing a lot of outreach to its partners to say, like, listen, we really need you to support us here. Yeah, we're stronger together. Can you just, like, all right, you've already got Oculus. Can you just... <laughs> Push this through, please. Really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose we'll see what that mater actually materializes because it's er definitely early days for AR Corp. But, oh, very. Uh, but they need to be there. Apple is, you know, is making a big push on that uh, with the iPhone. Um, we'll see what it actually amounts to. That's that's what I wonder about AR because AR is cool. I just don't know how, how much people are really going to buy into it. I mean, know? let's not forget that there are plenty of apps out there that have had AR implemented. Yeah. Like Yelp has had that AR feature. Does anybody use it? That's a good point. Um, you That's know, really good point. Sony had AR features that you could use in their little Xperia camera apps and But maybe people weren't using it because they weren't as familiar with it as a concept and now there's more of an awareness and so I people think will that's think about absolutely it. Absolutely true. Yeah. I suppose we'll see. Hey, we've got an email from Mike Welch who wrote in to say about a month ago, I installed one of those annoying reward program apps. In this case, it's called Tropical Smoothie Cafe. <laughs> Sounds like a great app. <laughs> and quickly noticed it was constantly using my location in the background just to bug me when I got close to one of their locations. I went into Android's permissions and turned off its location access. To my surprise, the app continued to generate no notifications when I was near a store. I guessed that maybe once an app has location access, it can somehow retain it even when revoked. So I completely removed the app and reinstalled it, denying location access from the start. To my surprise and concern, the app still knows when I'm near a tropical smoothie cafe store and generates a notification. How can this be? I considered that maybe it was listening for a high frequency sound coming from the store, but it doesn't even request microphone access. Pretty sure it's probably not doing that. Uh, I thought I had a pretty good understanding of how Android works, but this is crazy. Do you know of any trick apps, uh, tricks or apps that can use... Oh, oh, I see. Do you know of any tricks apps can use to get your location without the official location hmm. permission. Thanks for any insights on this. Hmm. So on a per app basis, you, which it sounds like Mike already did, if you go into settings, general apps, configure apps or app settings, app permissions, somewhere in there, your location shows apps. Uh, if you go into the your location section, it shows apps with that particular permission. You can disable those for apps in question. Uh, but like I said, that's similar to what Mike obviously did, and that didn't seem to do anything. Okay. You can go with a more blunt force approach if I'm understanding what's happening here correctly. If you go into settings and location, there's location mode. And if you look at that, oh, it has yes. three different modes. It has high accuracy, which uses mm -hmm. all available options, GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and mobile networks. If you're set on high accuracy, by and large, I think that gives apps greater access to you're you know, allowing, higher, you're higher resolution. Because you're allowing the system, go ahead, broadcast. Just every every possible way you can track yeah. me, do it. Just do it. Uh, battery savings is another option. That uses Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and mobile networks, mm -hmm. but no GPS, obviously, to save battery. And then there's another one that's device only, which only uses GPS. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to help in this particular situation, but I would imagine if you're turning off location... I don't know. Like, I mean, that's that's cutting off GPS. I don't. I don't. I guess I don't understand exactly what that means when you turn off location in the quick settings. Is it actually cutting off all of these other things? It should be. It that's, should be because the whole point is you turn that off when you go into airplane mode. It's going to shut off the location like that by default. So the whole point is that you're shutting off these functionalities from you're pinging. Just saying, I don't want location yeah. being broadcast no, no in any way, shape, or form. No pinging whatsoever allowed. That's that's how I'm interpreting it. I think. <laughs> You made a note in here that makes perfect sense that maybe it was just a badly coded app. Like maybe it just, you know. Yeah. May, but if maybe you, it just wasn't properly configured. Possibly so. And that that's kind of what I was wondering. If you go to the Play Store and you check out the reviews for this app, like they aren't very good. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are, are pretty poor on, Ooh, on the app development I mean, side. How much do you need that smoothie? I, <laughs> right. <laughs> how much are you saving on these smoothies? Uh, I get it. I understand. Um, but... Yeah, it's just so so bizarre that you would turn off, actively turn off in your quick settings location, yet the app is still able to pick up on it. And the only thing that I can think of is that even when you turn off location, your cell radio is still transmitting and there's still information in there. Does that mean that the app can get at that information even though you've told it location 
wise don't track, but I mean, you're still connecting to the cell tower and maybe it can figure that out. It, um, but it should some disclose the, that. Um, yeah, well, you're right. It, it should, should disclose that in the app permissions that it's using Wi-Fi and... Which, yeah, kind of goes back to how well was this app designed yeah. and you know, how much do the designers yeah. care about that stuff? The developers care about it. So I don't know if that's a perfect answer for you, Mike, but it's definitely something to think about. And I'm pretty positive we'll get some emails on this after the fact because uh, we usually do on questions like this. Mm -hmm. So... Triple A at twit.tv if you want to send us your thoughts and maybe we can crack this code that Mike sent in. Uh, we're going to take a break and thank the sponsor of this episode. And then we're going to get to our hardware section where we've got some really cool stuff to show off and to talk about. It has something to do with something called a pixel. I don't know. We'll talk about that. But up uh, now, we're going to thank the sponsor of this episode, ZipRecruiter. If you're in need of great talent, let's say you own a business, uh, you know, you're, you're probably pretty busy. You're short on time a lot of the times. I know people who are business owners don't have a lot of time on their hands. Uh, so you don't have, uh, you, you know, you don't want to get lost in a huge stack of resumes. You don't have the time to find your perfect hire with all of those resumes come in. And you just need the right tools, smarter tools. And with ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just one single click. So you'll rest easy knowing your job is being seen by the right candidates. That's the first big challenge, making sure it's seen by the right people. Then ZipRecruiter puts its smart matching technology to work, actively notifying qualified candidates about your job within minutes of posting so you receive the best possible matches. Uh, and that's the other very important part. You want to get those matches sent to you. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other hiring sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on the right candidates finding you. It finds them. You can even get a head start on the interview process by adding screening questions to your job post to help identify the most qualified candidates so you don't waste your time filtering through people who are unqualified. You don't have to waste time sorting through a stack of resumes to find the perfect fit anymore. No wonder 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate through the site in just one day. The easy-to-use ZipRecruiter dashboard lets you manage your hiring practices from start to finish all in one single place. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes uh, to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, you can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. All you have to do is just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. And we thank ZipRecruiter for their support of All About Android and the Twit Network. All right, it's time for... I've been waiting for this because I haven't seen him in person yet. It's time for Hardware. I mean... You you've got the Pixel devices, but you've also got them in the box. Have you have you like been living with these L I V I? I have not been living with them because I've been living with the V thirty. Oh, okay. All right. I you know I don't I don't I I I am not um, in a rush. Okay, I'm not in a rush. You got the next year. I you've got of, a whole year until I, the next drop of Pixel devices. <laughs> I just feel like everybody kind of already laid out their initial reviews. Yeah. We all know that initial reviews are like very quickly written. It usually takes True. a lot of time to really get to know a phone. I'm taking my time with the V30 right now. However, I couldn't help but have my interest peaked when I was hearing about all of the quality control issues with the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL, which is supposed to be kind of like... Uh, maybe not necessarily the sister phone, but because it's manufactured by LG, you can't help but, you know, pick out the similarities between it and, and the, the V30. And the V30. Okay. Um, now, I brought all those things with me. But awesome. I think, first of all, before we dive into sort of the drama, let's do a quick little show and tell because I want um, Jason to get some hands on time with me. I can't wait. My shipping uh, order, by the way, through the Google site says that it should deliver tomorrow, but I haven't got that like magical email that says it's on its way. So I'm really crossing my fingers yeah. that I get it soon. So this is the box. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Love it. We've it's got multiple light, camera angles and everything. Box. Wow. All right, I'm going to put that on the ground. Uh, right. Here's the fingerprinty Pixel 2. Excellent. Um, I put this on a quiet account, so it doesn't have a lot of stuff on here. Um, I don't use that passcode, so don't get excited. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just because of this. Oh, 
I think that's too bright. I'm trying to find a brightness that there works. There we go. That yeah, this good. is the Pixel 2. It is... It is really nice. It is really light. It is, um, it's got this, uh, this matte finish to it. I believe this is, somebody said this is not plastic. This is actually m like a special kind of metal. Yeah. Um, but I, it feels plastic, like it, the, it the feels layer? Kind of, yeah, it feels plastic, but it's fine. Um, the screen is nice. It's light, again, I haven't shot anything with it. I promise I will do a little like photo shootout. I just need some time. Yeah. I just need some time. But I'm going to hand this off uh, to Jason. Oh, okay. All right. So this so is the you smaller can one. Handle it a little bit. This is the smaller one. I've been I've been very used to as well, especially the past month. I've been using the the Note 8, which is definitely a lot oh, wow. taller. Yes. Um, so yeah, but yeah, that feels nice. Oh, I see what you mean. It's got a, like mm -hmm. a nice texture on the back. Um, I know. Yeah. I'm just it's sorry to underwhelm everybody that I haven't really used it. Well, no, I mean um, you just ah, sorry. It's okay. You just I got I ha I got um. This is gonna sound like a hump, like a brag, but I got like four phones at the same time, and so I'm and I'm kind of in no hurry to review them because yeah. the holidays are coming up, and that's kind of the real test of these phones is how are they gonna you know deal with all the travel and all the family photos that I need to take and all the communicating I'm going to be doing. So I'm kind of hoping to get something out, Yeah, you know? Well, yeah. So, um, I mean, I think immediately one of the first things that I realized between the old pixel and the new, which I already knew is that there's no more of that like teardrop shape on the back. You know, the other one kind of had a, a little bit wider at the top, a little bit narrower down at the bottom. Which is, is which is a small thing, but I know that bugged some. It doesn't people. It didn't look really bug, it didn't like really an HTC me. phone to me. Uh, the Pixel uh, kind of the first gen looked like an HTC phone. This just looks like a phone. Yeah. Like I don't see the influence there. Yeah, totally. Um, whereas like the it. Pixel Two XL, which uh, we'll open over here on the <gasps> other side of the table, um, I mean, this has got some. I would say, again, sorry for the fingerprints. I would say that this one, the only thing that's remotely LGE about it is this these rounded corners over here because if you look at the LG V30, which I'm going to try and um, do over here, they've got those same rounded corners to accommodate for that, ratio, that bezel ratio. Uh, but it doesn't feel like an LG phone. Like okay. this is a light phone. It feels just like the other one, but a bigger version yeah. of it. Well, and that's what everybody, at least all the reviews that I've, that I've read, you know, say, which is that this is very much, this is, you know, sure it had LG's, uh, LG was involved with the larger one. HTC was involved with the smaller one, mm -hmm. but these are much more, feel much more to a lot of people yeah. that have been reviewing it and as might want to close. Turn the brightness down. Yeah, it looks pretty bright, doesn't it? <laughs> Whoops. There we go. Um, so uh, feel closer to go what a, a Google designed phone would be. Oh, go down just a tiny bit more so that mountain doesn't look so washed out there at the top. It's, Jeez. It's, is that, that's a really, okay, well, that's a bright display. You all saw it there. Right. Okay, so those quality control issues that we were talking about, that the internet has been talking about over the weekend. So it first starts off with complaints of burn-in from devices that aren't even two weeks old. Now, we can't speak to that here today because these have literally just come out of the box, so they're freshly baked. Right, right. Uh, but I will say neither of them had any defect tags on the inside. <laughs> they are both fine, and they both set up fine and charged fine. Um, now, you know, we do know that OLED panels are susceptible to uh, that sort of burn in, but you know, one to two weeks is not typically normal <laughs> for that to happen. Yeah, uh, also we see, you know, this is not the same thing as what happens with the image retention. We sometimes see in LCD panels. That's actually temporary. What people are talking about is more of a permanent annoyance that stays behind. Google says that it is investigating that particular problem. The Verge even removed the review score until further notice because of it. So it's just like, whoa, craziness. Lots of lots of stuff going on around the internet. Right. Um, there's also complaints of discoloration and a blue tint when you look at it at an angle. Now, Jason, would you please look at that at an angle and then- you, I absolutely see Now it. look at this, look at this. Okay. And put that at high brightness if you need to. Okay. They, okay. both yeah, they both tint blue. Yeah, they both do it. It's a, it's, I, I want to say it's a 
OLED thing because I see the blue tint very much so. Yeah, they both do it. Yeah, on the LG and Samsung phones, just what I know from the past. But yeah, that blue tint. But the thing is, I don't think that's the same blue tints people are talking about because I was looking at photos on the internet and it looks more of like a discoloration in the top corners. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, I mean that speak. doesn't that doesn't bug me. I mean, when you look at, when you look at most displays off axis, like I feel like there's a reduction either in brightness or a little bit of color shifting that happens. I guess I've just kind of accepted that and gotten used to it. The colors do are represented a tiny yeah, bit differently. Right? Yeah, this is the V30. Um, the colors, I'm just laughing on my case. Uh, the colors are represented a little differently on the XL2 than they are in the V30. Like you'll see more of a blue tint on the V30. Um, whereas I feel like the Pixel XL2, for some reason, I want to say it's more lifelike. It's hmm. just, it's, it's like a mute... <laughs> Do you see what I'm talking about? Here, can you <laughs> unlock this and yes. I'll show the, uh, well, actually this probably has a different app drawer to it. it. Uh, I'm on the Pixel app oh, drawer. Oh, okay. Okay, so, I just wanted to do side by side like. It's not as, whoa. Uh, uh, sorry, I turned up the, I know, I am blinding everybody. Goodness gracious me. Okay. Man, ah, it's so hard. I wish you there know, was some it's way to the displays get these days. Okay. Uh, just stop, <laughs> just stop. <laughs> This is not easy, folks. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right. So I just wanted to see kind of like, yeah, they um, have a de basically a very similar uh, kind of color color wash. It almost seems like the V30 is a little bit bluer. Uh, there's but I, they're, they're probably, I mean, they're obviously not dialed perfectly at the same brightness that you see here. No, not but at all. I, I don't feel like this is a game changer for me. If, if it was just that looking at it off axis shifts the color a little bit like that doesn't bug me i never look at it off axis anyways i always look at it straight on and if it looks great like that then that's fine by me well there are also complaints of black smearing when scrolling which i yeah. haven't ex uh, experienced i've seen that i've this, seen that on my pixel and it yeah bug this me. is existing on last year's pixel uh and speaking of the pixel 2 the regular the little one there's complaints of high pitched whines and clicking noises coming from its speakers uh, as well as complaints of imbalanced speakers on the front. I believe that was for the Pixel 2. Yeah, that was for the Pixel 2. Yeah. Yeah, that was just like a small laundry list of things people are complaining about. So, Victor, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind bringing up that link from Stephen Hall on Twitter. Stephen Hall is at 9 to 5 Google. He's been really good just about like following up on this. So you can see this sort of graininess exhibited uh, in this little photo. Yeah, I've I've noticed. I've, so I've looked at this a couple of times. You see it. You actually see it less. I feel like when you zoom in on it. Um, but you can kind of yeah. see what you're looking at is the very bottom bar, which is the navigation bar, and you can kind of see how there's a nice block line there burn. and the three little dots. Uh, from you know from the supposed burn in that's happening. Not that I by the way I don't doubt that it's happening. Uh, but that's what you're seeing there. It's kind of you have to stare at it for a few before you actually start to see it. I think it's I think it's troubling though that you start seeing this at such an early time. Um, and if this is happening on multiple phones, which is happening on definitely a number of reviewers' phones, that's not insignificant. It's true, especially if it's happening to those reviewer phones. I mean, that's a small. Like what is that? Like three thousand units or something? Yeah. So yeah. I mean that's that's interesting. I mean there are reports coming out that Google's gonna like issue a software update. So there was a statement to Nine to Five Google where Google had confirmed that it recognized people's complaints and that it will look into quote unquote adding more options to control the colors on its display. I don't. To I control the software. The yeah, color gamut kind I, of complaints that people have. I don't know if that's. I don't know if enough about displays to yeah, speak on that. I mean, and some people are complaining also that the display in general or the, um, the display in general doesn't have, you know, doesn't pop. It's not uh, oversaturated the way some displays that, you know, the, the general uh, public that has a device, you know, like Samsung devices, for example, yeah. are, are kind of fall in that camp where when you look at the displays, they, it's almost like in some ways they're more saturated than what they a, are general they definitely kind of are. baseline just look at the reds you would be just and compare reds. that's very pleasing to the eye for yeah. a lot of people for it people makes pictures look really good 
Um, I actually kind of like it, but uh, but it also doesn't bother me to see something that's a little bit more flat, which is what people are complaining about with the I with like, the pixels. I like the flatness of the pixels. It's just this. It fits in with this Google aesthetic that I that I strive mm. to carry in my hand <laughs> each day. And they so they've totally sold me on the whole like package of the material design and the way everything just kind of fits nicely together with the, you know, with the uh, with the design of the Pixel phones. Like it's all this nice cohesive package. But as far as, you know, if you should be worried about this. Now, I have gotten a lot of queries, mm. which is why I feel kind of bummed that I haven't had much time to really like delve into this. I've gotten a lot of queries about, so what should I do? Should I cancel my Pixel 2 XL order? Right. Well, in fact, Todd Baldwin... Mm -hmm. wrote in. He says, mm -hmm. this is breaking my heart. My Pixel 2 XL ships in three days and I am considering canceling the order. Do you have any advice? This is my first LG phone and I'm not hearing good things about LG's track record with quality control. Now, I wouldn't worry so much because you do have Google. The, if you yeah. ordered it from the Google store, like you've got Google's protection against it. So if you have an issue, I mean, customer service you can just call them and well yeah i mean they they cover is it 15 or 30 days once you buy a device yeah. from google you have 15 or 30 days it's a big difference yeah. i know but i didn't look it up prior to the show i'm sure someone in chat will throw it in there uh but you have some time to get your, your full full money back as mm -hmm. long as the phone's in good condition you can send yeah. it back so i wouldn't cancel your order get it see if the color shifting or the color issues whatever you want to call it really bothers you uh, and if it does, you have, I mean, you have like more than a week at the very early, at and the very And that's apparently know, when lowest. these things are popping up is like right at the... I mean, if it's the burn-in issue, that's a different story. And I feel like if even, I, I don't quote me on this, but I would guess that even if you get outside of that 30 days and this burn-in issue, because it's been called out this early yes, on in device release, if it ends up being a big issue that's actually a hardware issue, I'd be really surprised if Google didn't rectify that. that. I was going to say. Yeah. What's that, 15 days? So 15 days from when it arrives at your doorstep, says Hell's Kitchen, and Burke is saying that here as well. Um, so you have, you have that amount of time if the color kind of, temperature or whatever the complaints are of the display bother you that much, you can send it back. But I think if, it, if it's this burn-in issue and it's an actual hardware issue and it's a manufacturing issue and they figure it out and they fix it, I'd be really surprised if Google didn't rectify I want to know if people are getting this if they buy their phones from Verizon too. Like I oh. want to, because that's going to be another sort of headache because if you order your phone from Verizon, you have to deal with Verizon customer service, which in my experience has been, Pretty okay. You know, I've gotten things I needed from them mm -hmm. with enough calling. <laughs> so, you know, uh, good luck. Yeah. Don't give up because... Don't, give up. Don't stop. Because... Believe in. And just, just like one little side note, which maybe Flo getting a little too like personal with how she's feeling about all these things, but there are so many awful things happening in the world. And I promise you, this is like not that bad comparatively that will always be the case though i, know, I hate to but say it's like, like that's always not, that just, can always be said but there are other I just issues feel like this you know is what not I mean? note seven level freak out there's nobody getting well, burned here that, i mean but that's there's a really no good point safety right safety issue this might not be note note seven level freak out but note seven was about as bad as it could possibly get for a company that's true and samsung totally rectified it and came out and 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 obviously that didn't hurt samsung because they're doing okay you know what I mean? True. People were, they, they gave refunds. They gave discounts on, on the future model. I mean, they completely undid this thing that felt at the time pretty catastrophic for Samsung. Um, and obviously it wasn't. They they were able to undo it. This is pretty minor compared to that. Um, so I don't know. Get it. See how you feel. Don't, don't cancel your order. I don't think you need to. If you're excited about the phone, get it and see what you think. And if you don't like it, return it. They'll take it back. If, you, if you're within that window, at least. You know, though, if it were an iPhone... Would people be freaking out about this more if it were an iPhone or less? I think they'd be freaking out about the same amount. Yeah. I would do. Would Android fans be freaking out about it and iPhone They'd people not like, care? Ha, welcome to our world. <laughs> because sometimes that happens, right? This big thing happens and, and people glom on, you know, uh, people who don't, you know, live in the iPhone world have been known to make a big deal out of things that happened with an iPhone. And some iPhone users would say, like, we just, we just don't really care. You guys are the one making all the noise. Do you agree with that? Do you think that happens? 
I feel like that happens sometimes. I, I, could be wrong. I understand the issue. It's it's happening on the phone that costs the most of the two. Yeah. Is this was supposed to be, you know, our intro to a high powered, high performance Google phone that is gonna cost you a premium because you're getting the best of the bunch. Yeah. And if it does have like those display issues that it does have this manufacturing thing, I think that maybe you know, I'm sure that could be traced back to something. I mean, how many leaks did we have over the summer? Who knows what happened in manufacturing? Who knows what happened with deals and business contracts and, and you know, supply chains and yeah, just all sorts of factors that could have been introduced that could have caused this. And what a bummer, but hey, Google, welcome to making your own phones. <laughs> Welcome to making your own phones. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm so sorry. By the way, <laughs> I didn't realize. That was completely out of context and unintentional. Yeah, that was completely that was unintentional, and I apologize it to happens. anybody that I just triggered. Um, but yeah, welcome That's to the right. phone game, Google. You're officially here with us. They've got Aww. a big complaint here. Yeah, you've made it. You've made it. You've, made you've it. arrived. You've made it. You've, you've had arrived. a scandal. This is great. Uh, well, speaking <laughs> of the note. We can transition to yes. that. I've been living with the Note 8, Samsung Note 8, for about a month now. And here's here's what I realize, because, I mean, we've played we play with a lot of phones all the time. And, and by the way, I apologize, because I realized we did talk about doing the Note 8 together on air, but I've okay. just been so distracted by the V30. Don't worry about it. It's all good. I'm, anyway, sure, you, I'm sure you have thoughts, and I, and I can see you have some pictures. Oh, no, no, you don't. I put in the pictures. Sorry. Those are your pictures. Uh, those are my pictures. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. So spent a lot of time family? with the Note 8. Use it for a month. Um, and the best thing that I can say is with the phones I like the most, the, the thing that comes to mind is that I don't get around to pulling my SIM out and going back. And if I do that, if that happens and this totally happened with the Note 8, then I know, at least in my opinion, it's a good phone because... There are a lot of phones that I use and I do my review and it's and it's the easiest thing in the world for me to be like, all right, done with that, sim out, back of my phone, yep. life goes on. But with the Note 8, I keep putting it off and I know that that means that I actually really like it. Uh, the S Pen, I will definitely say, still not a part of my daily routine. I, can, I It's just not a thing that I ever think to use. Uh, nice to have, I suppose. It's good the for pointing. I, I, I suppose, but so is my finger. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it uh, all depends on how you it. use it. Yeah, I just never do. Um, and the only time I ever use it is when I show someone that it exists, basically. Uh, the device feels really nice. People ask me about it all the time when I'm out and about. They're like, oh, man, that's a nice looking phone. So from a stylistic standpoint, aside from uh, the fingerprint wall that you see back here, stylistically, people see this phone and it's very eye catching. It feels really mm -hmm. nice when I pull it out. As you can see, I don't have a case. I'm like, all right, I'm going to see if I can do it. Can I live a month without a case on a on a very delicate, fragile phone, and I've done fine. I don't know if that speaks to me. I have a glittery case with your name on it, by the way, <laughs> okay. for the Note 8. Though I will say, as a caveat, one thing some of the cases do, it make it hard to get to the S Pen. Oh, Just FYI. Oh, yeah, I've been finding right. that. It ends up being more recessed in there and yeah. popping that out, it, I it's imagine. It's harder if you have long nails. Like uh, I imagine it would make finding the fingerprint sensor a little bit easier because I know that was the way it was on the S8 and the S8 Plus, that it was up there. And if you had a case, that at least gave your finger an uh -huh. extra guide. Yeah. Because I hate where it's located. And if they don't fix that on the 9... It's not intuitive at all. Oh, it sucks so it's bad. So unintuitive. And it, I have not gotten used to it. And it just is a constant inconvenience. Thankfully, I've set up Iris scanning and that helps but when it doesn't yeah, it helps most of the time but still it's like part of my like instinct to reach you know for the what? fingerprint sensor I miss the side power button on the V30 Oh yes well I picked up the V30 because I was it's like how really cuz I on? can't I can't turn it on without like putting my finger behind it yeah. so yeah. Yeah. uh anyway usability uh pictures I've been super I've been taking so many yeah, pictures let's see with your, this. can we see your pictures uh pretty darn awesome that's our new <gasps> dog that that's a new dog sugar wow sugar looks really good this is very high res is this with portrait mode this is with the portrait mode or wow. whatever Samsung calls it I suddenly can't I'm blanking uh, uh you can see a little bit if you go up on something uh <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, if you go up onto her forehead, you can kind of see where the blurring begins. Yeah, if you really go there in there, you, you see it on on like the hair on the tuft of her of her head and everything. Um, so I mean, there's a little bits of artifact there, but I mean, when you're all zoomed out, it looks really great. Uh, they yeah, don't all beautiful. they don't all turn out that well, but they do. This is uh, <laughs> me and Sugar Selfie. being on the same page. <laughs> 
Um, but it just takes really great pictures. And I was really wow. happy and took a lot of pictures. I'm super stoked on the two time zoom, uh, which I really want. Really? An optical zoom. I love yeah? it. I use it oh, all the time. Look at these so yes. the lighting is nice in these photos. Thank you. That's is that my, your house that's my or living room. yeah. Oh, okay. But that's good that the no aid can produce that, that it's not like yellowing it or something. Yeah, this is, um, um, is that moderately corn? close that's up. Corn. Uh, that's corn. That's this corn. is pumpkin uh, pumpkin patch time. Yes, it, it's that time of year. Uh, yeah, so we'll 90 degrees pumpkin and patch. pumpkin patches. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's life in California, Northern <laughs> California. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? We got a few more, I know. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's one of my girls, pumpkin patch. But you can see, okay, so uh, oh, above really good. above her head. So this is, this is, uh, this is the portrait mode mm -hmm. too, but above her head, you can see there's a shirt behind her. That yeah. is totally in focus. So it's not perfect. Not perfect. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't catch it 100%. But it looks time. so good from far away. And like you, and then you can share this on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And it's Most already. Most people would notice. I mean, I, I would notice that because that shirt totally stands out. Everything else back there is blurred, but that yeah. shirt's totally in focus. So that would bug me. But that's an example of it not working. Uh, and then I think I have some low light stuff. Oh, this looks like Samsung low light. I can see like kind of the graininess. A little grain. That was yeah. a really dark room. Um, I know, but that's that's how it works. Yeah, it just comes out. I mean, it comes out grainy, but you get more you of get a it. sliver of what's going totally, on. Totally, totally. I was pretty happy with that, considering the grain. This was at a concert, spiritualized. And the next one, man, I mm -hmm. just love this picture. Yeah, that's this a was good photo. Uh, this was at a at a concert, and I mean the the clarity of everything that you see in there, the beams coming off the off the uh, party ball or whatever you call that. The yeah. Uh, why am I blanking? Anyways, Let's go ball. Disco ball. There we go. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty happy with the uh, with the picture and video quality. I think there's also a video uh, somewhere in there, but whatever. Videos, video. Um, I I love oh, still lovely. having. Uh, oh yeah. So check this out. This was a cool thing that I saw at the SF Music Tech Summit. Oh. It's like a little moving piece of artwork under a black light. Anyways. Oh, neat. Um. I love having the headphone jack and I will definitely miss it as I can transition from oh, this yeah. onto the Pixel oh, yeah. to XL. So anyways, that's the note date. That's my time with it. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with it. I'm ready for the Pixel 2 XL to arrive because then I will have more of a motivating yeah. reason to... <laughs> oh, you're giving me yours? No, Thank it's not mine. You. I'm borrowing it for oh. one night only. <laughs> oh, but this is them side by side. The uh, Pixel 2 XL maybe slightly yeah. wider? Yeah, it's a tiny bit oh. wider. And the note I mean, is I mean, a tiny bit taller. Hair, maybe a hair. It is a 6.4 inch display on the note. Yeah, the note is a tiny bit slimmer. Anyway, it is. Anyways, and they're both those water are my resistant, which is so nice. Yes, happy they did that. Although it does encourage you or inspire you rather to check your email while you're underwater. While you're <laughs> I guarantee you, I will never check my email while I'm underwater. To work, waiting for your oh, leaving no. conditioner. Just leave your phone out of the I know, no, this no, is no, what happened to our society. Don't. They just said don't. you need to work, so we're going to make it so you can work everywhere. Oh, man. No, thank you. I'm just giving in. <laughs> All right, we got one more story. It's got your initials. We do initials have one more story, and it, it does have my initials on it. Uh, the story is that the essential phone, with everything going on in the world, with, of the world of phones, that is. Maybe the essential phone looks a little more enticing to you at its four ninety nine price point. That's okay. a $200 drop on the essential phone. Now, we know the essential phone didn't sell very much. Uh, you know. Yeah, a rocky start. Rocky Let's start. So, yeah. you know, if you want to be a part of history, <laughs> you could buy yourself an essential phone today. And apparently... Uh, apparently there are some improvements being made to the camera software. So if that's something you want to hold out for, um, since the reviews were sort of talking about the f <clears throat> camera not being up to snuff. Oh, it was, it was not good. Uh, but you know, it's, it's an essential phone and it's 500 bucks and it's cheaper than the pixel, the new pixels. $500 is definitely more enticing for the device. If you are big into like having a phone that has a, a unique style to it, if that matters to you, it doesn't matter to a lot of people, but it does to some, uh, and you want kind of the modular capability, or maybe you just have faith that essential as you a brand, have faith. Yeah. Da -dun, yeah. Da -dun. yeah. Uh, that the essential brand, like you, you want to be there from the beginning. You like what Andy Rubin is doing. I think 500 is a much better price for this. Or I you can buy a one plus five, 
and get six gigs of RAM. Well, I mean, well yeah. I mean, well, that's an interesting comparison, actually. Space. Because this puts it almost and a better directly. Camera. It, all, it puts it, it takes it out of premium smartphone yeah, category puts in, and puts it into the pretty darn good utility. smartphone for a very good price. Flagship utility. Yeah. Utility flagship. Is that I don't the, know. Is that I want to make up a category for category? it. But I just think of it as those phones that, man, this is a really good phone, but maybe it's not going to really turn heads. You know, it's like a really good leather jacket. It's going to last you for eons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's... it's, it's oh, it might not. You know. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Although these are smartphones we're talking about here, it might not True. last a year. I know. Uh, okay, so that metaphor <laughs> didn't work. Uh, never mind. Uh, but you know, essential phone, five hundred bucks if you want to. Well, yeah, and not only that, if you, if you already have an essential phone, you have the ability to either get a friends and family coupon worth the same amount, the two hundred dollars, towards a new device. So if you wanted to give that to a, a wow, friend or whatever, I guess that takes that off. Uh, or three hundred sixty degree camera, uh, just given to you so you can use their add-on with the 360 degree camera and not have to pay for it so you yeah. got some incentive i suppose there you, yeah sure sure there you go all right we're going to take a break and thank the sponsor of today's episode of all about android and then we'll get into some app news before we do that let's thank video blocks by story blocks uh, if you need sound effects for podcast production, if you you know do video production and you need a video background, maybe even for your website or a hero image on your blog, all these things, uh, your creative need, you know, needs might be compromised because you have budget constraints, let's say. It's not always easy to secure the right image, the right material, the right assets for your project. You can get studio quality stock video for a fraction of the cost with video blocks. You download all the stock video your heart desires from their member library. That includes over 115,000 studio quality HD videos, After Effects templates to get you started there, uh, motion backgrounds, and a whole lot more. All content is royalty free. So you can use it for commercial uh, as well as personal projects. Everything you download is then yours to keep and use forever. And new clips are added all the time. They're added regularly. So there's always something fresh to download, new things to pick from. Uh, also, you get exclusive discounts on additional Marketplace clips. Uh, you save 40% and the original artists take home 100% of the sale price. You'll get access to over 5 million additional videos that are available to purchase directly from artists. Now, we do video here at Twit. From time to time, we do video here on All About Android. And in fact, our TD, uh, Victor, produced something. I think you may remember it. Mateo's Hardware Shack used some video uh, right there that was actually secured through video blocks. Easy to, if what you're looking to do is create a, a bumper that in integrates a goat, which is what you would want to do if you're creating a bumper that involves Mateo, then you know. Now, the video blocks is the place to go to find it. Uh, don't risk the quality of a project due to high the high cost of acquiring footage with video blocks. You don't have to use old or outdated footage of goats. No more footage with an ugly watermark. Video blocks footage has been used by over 90,000 customers, including NBC, National Geographic, the History Channel, the Travel Channel, and of course, all about Android. Go to videoblocks.com slash Android to get all the stock video you can imagine for $149 a year. All the video, all you can eat. Don't eat the video, but, you know, you can get them. That's videoblocks.com slash Android to save on millions of studio quality clips from Videoblocks. And we thank Videoblocks by Storyblocks for their support of All About Android and for helping us create bumpers. And thanks to Victor for editing it too. Uh, Videoblocks.com slash Android. All right, it's time for a little bit of app news. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is a this is a quick one. Oh, yeah. Actually, most of these are pretty quick, actually. But um, when I did the switch with Mega Maroney, when I did mm -hmm. the iOS mm -hmm. for a month, and she did Android for a month, one of the things I noticed you know, almost immediately on iOS is that my uh, two-factor authentication app Authy had fingerprint uh, security on iOS. Doesn't on Android or didn't on Android for months, and I never understood why because we've had fingerprints since before iOS. What is the deal? Well, True. finally, Authy got around to it. 
there's not a whole lot to say other than <laughs> you can now with the Authy beta finally uh, use fingerprint support. And uh, I don't really know why it took this long. It seems like a no brainer, but it's integrated in there now. And I just really hope that this is a, si a signal of things to come from, or at least a, a signal of what app developers are thinking about the fingerprint sensor and, uh, you know, just supporting it. Because I'm, I'm honestly kind of baffled that at this point, how long have we had fingerprint sensors? And yet it's still not like a, a mandatory inclusion to support them. So many phones have fingerprint sensors right now. And when it's, a f when it's an app that's built around security, like why? Why not? I don't get it. Tell me, Flo, Why? Life is hard. I okay. don't know what to tell you. Good answer. We just slog through it. Uh, but, but thank you for doing that, Authy. Appreciate it. Thank you, Authy. We do we do slog through life with <laughs> subscriptions to things, which Google is hoping to incentivize developers to make subscriptions more of a thing in the Play Store. So like Apple, Google's taking a playbook by reducing play, the Play Store fee for Android app subscriptions. Essentially, this means... You know, if a customer, for instance, me, has been subscribed to something like, oh, I don't know, HBO Go, okay. um, which you can actually subscribe with your Google Play account, which is awesome because it just takes money out of that account. Uh, if you've been subscribed for a year or longer, the devs will only pay 15% store transaction fee instead of 30%. And this is going to become in effect January 1st, 2018. Apple, well, I don't know if January 1st, we should just say January 2018 because we yeah. all know sometimes yeah. it means like January 30th. Uh, Apple did this last year. It helps, again, keep the apps and services from bypassing the uh, Play Store to avoid paying fees. And it also keeps app quality higher to entice users to stick around. So it's just more processes put into place to make the Play Store more of a... I mean, I don't want to say legitimate app marketplace. It's definitely a legitimate marketplace. It's just to make it more for developers to invest in. Google wants, if, if there are subscriptions happening inside apps, even though it's possible to do it outside of the Play Store, Google wants to make it yes. easy for developers to route it through the Play Store so yes. that they can get a cut. And this is a way to do it. Um, and and yeah, I like, I like the long-term ramification of that, which is... You know, if it's it's a pretty sizable incentive if you're talking on a per user basis of your app, if you have a very popular app, to incentivize you to keep updating the app, keep it you know up to par uh, for a year or longer, so that you know yeah. that you're going to get that discount, and that that actually translates to some good money that you save as a result. Yep. So, uh, developers are always looking looking keep them, for keep ways them to make back more money. For so more. There you go. Yeah, uh, and speaking of coming back for more. I'll come back for more Monument Valley when Monument Valley 2 comes out. Apparently, because we knew it's it's on the horizon, uh, you can now go to the Play Store and pre-register for Monument Valley 2 if you, like me or like I, are excited for this new game. I loved the first one. There are Honestly, there aren't many games that I play beginning to end. I start them and I get really excited about them and then I get distracted by the next big thing or life happens, that's usually the case. And then I just kind of never go back to it. And Monument Valley, like I did, I did something about it, I just loved it. So I'm really excited for this next version. The artist behind Monument Valley is coming out with a game called Florence. Oh, really? Yes. I did just, they consult you? They did not consult me, oh. but I did see that headline on The Verge today. So I figured <laughs> I would share that there is a game... Named after me that is not affiliated with me. <laughs> well, we need to change that. Back in back in the history of All About Android, we've had games created, uh, uh, the All About Android game. Did you know that that exists? No, I didn't know that existed. Okay, we're going to do a little history this. here. All this wasn't part of the welcome package. Android Play Store. There is a game. Uh, is it Matthew Holtzum is the developer? Uh, Holtzum, Hol is it Holtzum or Holzer? Uh, let's see here. Uh, and, and Live so, riffing. Yes. Whole, uh, let's see here. Matthew. Jeez, why can't I not find this? Maybe I need to go to Play Store instead of Google search. Somebody in in the chat is going to find this before oh. I do. But let's see here. Or it's possible that it's not up anymore. This was years ago. All about Android. Uh, 
gosh, maybe it's not there anymore. Maybe it's gone. Maybe Google was like, but what I, is this? But I installed it. It should at least show for me. It's got to be in there. It's too old and outdated, says Sean. <laughs> oh, man. It was a platform runner. It was a, it was a, a platformer. Oh, it was a platformer? It was a platformer. Of you, Ron, and Gina? And yes. your little Android characters? Yes. Whatever happened to wow. that game? Wait a minute. No, no, no. I found, oh, I found, you found it. it? Oh, I found wow. it. All about Android, oh, the game. Okay, that so looks Victor, really nice. <laughs> Victor, I'm putting it in third link underneath that last story. Mm. Uh, hopefully, it's still. I had no idea. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's probably the best video game there ever was. And I say oh. was because I don't know the last time it was up. Guys, this is half the art from Scribble Knots. It looks like <laughs> uh, it probably isn't, and I apologize to the developer. I shouldn't. <laughs> Oh. Uh, it looks like it looks like the same style as Scribble Nights, I should say. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Um, this is Speed Round. We're picking up uh, cupcakes and donuts. Wow. Cupcakes and donuts. Yep. How this far is, we've This is come. Gina era. So, Jason, Gina, Ron. You can play as any one of your favorite old school characters. Um, wow. Apparently, Matthew Holtzum needs to update the game to include Florence. <laughs> And make Victor a uh, a hidden character. <laughs> I agree. He should jump out from behind and give you a bonus. Anyways, so yes, this uh, this does exist, and you can find it. All about Android, the game by Matthew Holtzum. Uh, and uh, last updated twenty fourteen. Yeah, I mean it's a little little old. Um, it requires Android two point two or above. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo-hoo. Look, we support all plat, all versions we of Android. We support all versions. Is there even an up- upside down version? Uh, anyways, I'm really happy that we got to talk about that again because I completely Me forgot. Too. There is also an all about Android alarm clock. Uh, <laughs> Wake up, it's flow in the morning. And, well, no, it's it's uh is. What was it called? It was uh, Is All About Android On Right Now or something like that. All About Android We're always live. on. As long as you go to twit.tv. Oh, man. Why is this search so bad? It should be pulling these things up. You know, Play Store search has not always been the most the most fruitful uh, of search engines. Apparently, you surprisingly. Think have that going for them. Google. Google. All. Search engine company. I mean, to be fair, these are probably really low. Oh, is it time for AAA? That's it, Sean. These are probably really low installs. So as far as the importance Yeah, they're like... Making, <laughs> it's, okay, so... We're not servicing that for you. for AAA? I wonder if this even still works. Let's see here. Okay, so there it is. Is it time oh for gosh. AAA by 47 Software? Computing We showed it time. off in the arena, if I remember correctly. Maybe it wasn't in the arena. Maybe we just showed it off in the app section. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if it's kept up to date with any time changes. Again, September 30th, 2013 was the last update on this app. Man, uh, where I was at that point in my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, life is a lot different. Anyways, we've got some awesome fans. Uh, we do. But I'd love to see these updated. No, no, you know what? You've got more important things to work on. There it is. Wow, see, look showing at those it off old on the, phones. Look at this blast from the past. What is that, the Nexus 4? Can you turn up the audio real quick? I want to hear this. Time. It totally failed. It totally failed. Oh, that's right. We tried to show it off because it was all about Android time. And it's one job is to show us when all about Android is live. And, uh, and it didn't do it. That's a Galaxy Nexus, by the way. Oh, sorry. Galaxy Nexus. Whoa. Sorry about that, everyone. All right. Anyway. Great start. (laughs) Thank you, Victor, for jumping through those hoops. For indulging us. Yes. uh, I'll go ahead and put that in the show notes. You can always find the show notes at twit.tv slash AAA. I've got both of those links in there. If you want to take a trip back in time, you want to go back in time, you can do that. Let's take a trip to an email. Yeah. Another email. Okay. Uh, This one's from Daniel. Daniel wanted to comment on why I still buy physical media, Blu-rays, as opposed to Ron, who doesn't want to get them anymore. Besides collecting them, my parents mostly like watching movies in Spanish, and here in the U.S., digital movies only offer an English... English language track, so I can't really load up my digital movies so that they can watch them. I hope this improves someday and more language tracks are offered. I agree. Secondly, I love the Movies Anywhere app, and finally being able to connect all my accounts into one place is great. To my surprise, all my Voodoo Digital movies also showed up in my Google Play Movies collection. Mm. 
This means that everyone in my Google Play family account can access all of my movies. I don't know if anyone noticed this. I think it is awesome. That is super awesome. Yeah. And by the way, everyone out there, full PSA, the family, the family plan, the family account of Google Play is is a huge asset to you and your friends, your close family members, like anybody that you just want to share media with. I love sharing things with my gal pals. We like buy, we buy TV shows and like movies and we share them in an account so that everybody can just like, you know. Is that okay? Is that legit? We're, we're family. We're friends family. Oh, okay. Okay. They're my family. Family. You know, we, we, I mean, it's, we consume they're in the these terms things. Of service, family. It's, it's with the people that I consume a lot of things with. Okay. So it's us like all supporting each other because, you know, media is expensive. We're not pirating it. We're paying for it. Mm -hmm. So I, that's also how I share my YouTube TV account. Oh, okay. Yeah. So fam, the are family. You sure, are you sure you're not just saying things and maybe. Just, no, I do. You can. Okay. I, I do, I do this. Do I put them on the family account. Okay. okay. So, uh, my husband and two of my friends and we all share media this way. Okay. Uncle Bick in chat says it's allowed. Yeah, it is. I have it. And it's and great. It's, it's awesome. And it also, it has helped encourage my Apple using friends, um, mm two of whom on my family account are to use Google Play, hmm. which is awesome. Okay. So it gives That's them a, a reason to get away product. from product. iTunes. So I am helping the Google economy yeah. by bringing Apple people over to our <laughs> ecosystem <laughs> is what's happening That's here. A, That's a good way to put it. I am very happy that, um, that Daniel pointed this out because I, I feel like I meant to yeah. mention that once you do this syncing, it's like those videos don't only just appear in the movies anywhere. Yeah. App. They also appear on your play store, um, you know, in the, in the collection. It's weird that it requires this app in order to make that happen. That relationship. I happen, think the but app is probably nice the validator that in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, the nice thing about physical media these days, and I only know this from commercials because I haven't purchased anything physical and uh, we buy LPs. We, we, yeah. <laughs> Again, so California. long players, uh, <laughs> records, records. Yes, um, you know, because they're collectors' items nowadays. Yeah. They've become more collectors' items, but and they sound great. The Blu-rays come with digital versions, yep. which you know is great. So you well, and sometimes you copy. can find Blu-rays uh, for sale really cheap, like even cheaper than you can get them on some are limited on edition, and whatever, and they come with the digital, so it makes sense to just buy it that way and then sync your account and yeah, whatever. Some like Disney puts DVDs back in the vaults. Yeah, why they do that? I understand why. And they, they do make that, it really hard to that. stream on the internet, and they make it really expensive to rent. Okay, anyway. <laughs> oh, we love you, Disney. <sighs> <laughs> Anyways, so it's time. Are you ready? Yeah. Are we gonna are we gonna battle? Just Flo and I. We're gonna battle in the arena. This is gonna Let's be such it. a friendly battle. <laughs> so many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android. Arena. Uh, I love that uh, Zephyr in chat just a few moments ago said, I feel like I'm listening to Jason and Flo in the morning. All it needs is zoo sounds and actual morning. Uh, no. <laughs> it's true. This is like the morning zoo. Uh, Jason and Flo edition. I like it. It's a lot of fun. All right. Last week we had a poll. I hope that you voted. And if you didn't, too late. Twit.to slash triple A vote 339. And let's see what the results were. Launcher Launcher was launcher, numero launcher. uno. Wow, by one vote. Nice. Wow, just barely eking out movies anywhere. Uh, How relevant. Yeah. So 127 votes versus 126 votes. So but literally still a 40%. single vote. Okay. Oh, still 40%, off. but yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, exactly. So, okay, and then third place, Spot On Alarm for Spotify at 13%, and fourth place is Bait at 7%. All right, good. I'm happy to accept that win. Uh, I don't know if we have results, and it's okay if we don't, but if they appear, I will let you know um, because I'm curious because this week kind of throws things for a loop because we don't have Ron here. It's good for me. And we don't have guests <laughs> here. I think it's good for both of us, actually. Oh, here we go. So thank you oh, again, thank you. Wade, Wade County. County. Uh, I know uh, starting early has kind of 
<laughs> kicked off the timeline a little bit. But the arena through the week, we've got Ron in first place still with 115. This is week 42, by the way. Me in second place at 110, guests at 107, and Jason, Oof. you are hovering at 101. I am so far behind at this point. It's okay. It's all right. Well, I, that's a that's a that's quite a gap. All I can say is, yeah, we're we're you and I both benefit this week because it's we just do. you and I. So, but we, you know what, we should do. I think this weekend we should just like download a bunch of apps and just like, cause I I got to do this. it in chunks, you know. You got this. I gotta get them in chunks so that I know, like. Yeah, it's true. You know, uh, if is it time for AAA still worked? I might bring that back, but uh, because it's been so long, it needs a revamp. If 47 software revamps it, then it qualifies in our rules that we can bring it back. Just saying. True. We'll bring it back. True. All right. So let's uh, dive into the apps of the day and flow because you were, ju you, you were just a little bit behind last week. Just a little bit. <laughs> you're you're going to go first. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am going to go first with a very, very simple app. It is called Bluetooth Volume. And uh, if you'll look over here in this camera, you will see that it is is—it is such a beautifully simple app. Um, I connect a lot of Bluetooth gadgets to my smartphone. I connect a lot of speakers and smart speakers. Some of them are louder than others. Sometimes um, I've got my, this is my music dongle in my car, which connects through auxiliary. And then I've also got the phone call Bluetooth in my car. So I have two separate Bluetooth uh, devices in the car that I have to deal with. And I like to juggle sort of, it's nice to be able to control the volume because mm -hmm. one thing I found is that Android natively doesn't really let you do a lot of, doesn't really let you do a lot of Bluetooth customization. So this, you know, was developed by a developer who wanted to listen to Spotify through the car radio, which is exactly what I was trying to look for. Uh, he was having problem, or they were having problems with resetting the Bluetooth volume to 50% every time a device would connect to something. And so this kind of helped ensure to get the full volume output that they could get. So what does it do? When you connect to Bluetooth with that particular device, it automatically sends a command to set the volume to a certain level that you specify prior? Yes. So it'll kind of like bypass that and oh, okay. set that up for you. You can set music volume. You can differentiate between oh, nice. music and call volume. If you've got like a multi, uh, multi-mode setup in your car, which I do not, um, I'm not actually a hundred percent sure about, I think, uh, I think autoplay, I haven't used it, which is why I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I believe this means that when you hook onto the Bluetooth, it'll, uh, fire up whatever is was playing in the background. So like mm -hmm. if you were listening to uh, pocket casts or something, maybe it'll just log on, but I haven't, again, I haven't tested that. Uh, it's got reaction delay, adjustment delays. Like you, you can kind of get these little granular controls over your Bluetooth devices. Settings are very simple. Just, it's not really much to this app. It's just a good sort of helper. Um, and then if you need to get in touch with uh, the developer, the developer uh, makes themselves, uh, they have their contact information in the about right here. So you can get in contact with them if you need something. Nice. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm like trying to find here. I, I feel like there was an email not very long ago that was asking about this autoplay thing. Yes. And this would be an app to kind yes. of... Yes. To do that. Yes. I'm trying to find the email to know who asked that question. Um, but I can't find it. Not not this quickly. Uh, but that's, that's great. That's awesome. It seems like it gives you a lot of control if you're using a lot of Bluetooth devices, especially. I don't really use a whole lot of Bluetooth, to be honest. But if you are, that would come in really handy. Uh, autoplay, by the way, just reacts like the play button. So just FYI. Right. Well, there are some... It simulates pressing the Bluetooth controller's play button. Okay. And that's a premium feature. Um, and I have to be honest that I can't remember if I paid for this or not to unlock it. Um, so let's see here. Sorry. Da, 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 no. Dang it. I really wanted to find that email, but I can't find it. So, um, I, but the email that I'm, that I'm thinking of... Specifically in that regard, mm -hmm. it it was a question where it said sometimes when I'm connecting, it forces an autoplay and I never want it to do yes. that. So I'm wondering if 
unchecking that will override that yeah, setting. Maybe. And I haven't maybe, had that maybe issue. Maybe unchecking that, but then also like slightly adjusting the level yeah. on that particular device. That way it sends a command that says yeah. no to autoplay, yes to this level of I volume. I guess that, so I can't speak to that. Yeah, I, just... I, I don't know, but it's a good place to go, whoever yeah. you were. <laughs> and I can't find it in the dock. I did a search for Bluetooth, and you can imagine how many uh, matches mm -hmm. came back on that. So that is Bluetooth volume control. And you can check that out. Um, Bluetooth volume control by Darken. Looks like it's the developer on by that. Darken. Darken. I'm going to admit that my app is not a, an app that nobody's ever heard of. Or maybe you haven't. I honestly, I had, I had heard the name of it, but I didn't realize like how how big of an app it was. It was produced by Warner Brothers. Uh, it's called Heads Up. I think it was even on like... Ellen DeGeneres show or whatever. Uh, yes, I don't it know. was. That's I why I was going to say Ellen made it very popular. Okay. All right. I didn't realize that. But I did know that when I was uh, in Sacramento a couple of weeks ago and we were eating at a restaurant, we looked over at a table and the entire table, this, uh, this kid had a phone up to her head and it had words on it. And the entire table was trying to guess, was trying to, to give her yeah. clues as to what she was. And then when she guessed it, you know, appropriately or whatever, um, she would. Or, Should we try it? Yeah. So Let's, so basically how it works, you get you all these demo? different, different, <laughs> different uh, segments, uh, different topics, right? And down here, there are more decks. So you have like an in-app purchase of mm. different decks of, uh, of things that you can be if you want more. There's Star Wars and a bunch of other ones. But let's see here. Um, what about a Halloween themed one? Okay, is there one? Oh, yeah. there is. Okay, so trick or treat, for example. So this is so this is it's kind of like a board game, but it uses your phone. And the idea behind it is you pick a card, card deck, and when I hit play, I have to put this phone on my forehead. Okay. I'm not going to see what it says, but you will, Flo. Okay. And it's going to give a bunch of words in a certain amount of time, and you have to you have to point me in the right direction of what I am at that particular moment so that I guess the right word. And if I guess it, I flip my phone downward. That okay. that can that counts it in here as a, I guess, oh, if I flip it up, that's okay. an I pass. All right. And uh, so don't flip it. I'll so I'm going to, well, I'm, I'm so bad at these games. So this is probably going to be pretty embarrassing, but this is a trick or treat. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Uh, and then I'll place it on my forehead. It's probably best to just have this. Okay. Okay. It's okay. I can oh, see I, from I here. Oh, I gotta not look at the screen too. Uh, okay. It's uh, what happens when you enter in the closet and the light isn't on. Uh, you turn it turn it on. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's dark. Yes. Okay. Uh, this was a popular uh, '80s cartoon about uh, Scooby Doo, mutant, no, teenage... Cowabunga, dude. Oh, uh, teenage mutant ninja turtle. Yes. Uh, oh, this guy is a quack. He's on daytime TV. He helped do the Cash Me Outside girl. He gave her. Uh, he ha! was, okay. <laughs> it was Dr. Phil, by the way. Okay. Uh, this is a flavor of, of, this is the, the flavor of the Oreo cookie on uh, the outside. Mystery. Uh, no. Uh, the, unknown. The cookie is. Oh, oh, uh, chocolate. Yes. Uh, this is what you do to your house when you want to make it all Halloween-y. Decorate. See, yes. Uh, this is the inside of your body. It, it holds uh, you blood. up. No, it, uh, it's blood. It's a skin. It, no, Bones. It, it, Close. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. We just played heads up on all that Android. Also, so, if you if you pass, um, it comes back around if you have more time at the end. So oh, you shouldn't tell so them. So you can come back to the yeah, ones you that you tell skip. Them what, what oh, they, what they okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So um, apparently I scored five. Wait, so Dr. Phil was in the Happy Halloween pack? That's weird. That's shade. Anyway, go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <All right>. Anyways, <laughs> this this might be a cheesy app that pick. Was fun. I don't know. It's, it's a okay. fun that was game fun. is the thing. That's why I brought it in here. It's actually fun. I played it with my kids. We had a blast with it. I didn't realize the the kind of where it came from. Probably you all have heard of it, but I hadn't until I saw it in the restaurant. I was like, what is that? That's a family game. What that's, is that? That's a fun family game, and I am in support of apps like this because it brings people together when yeah. they're bored and they're on their phones anyway. Yeah, exactly. What, yes, that that's exactly it because we go we go to restaurants and uh, only if we're like incredibly lazy do we ever give our kids a phone at the restaurant. I guarantee and like 99% of the time we don't silent. do that, but every once in a while we want date night and we don't have a babysitter. 
And you know what? That works. It's like we have a babysitter. Anyways, that's only happened once, by the way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to have everybody still doing things and, and engaged while you're waiting for, for the meal. And I was like, that's really cool. What is that? And they told me. And then when I looked it up, I was like, oh, so like everybody already knows about this but me. But anyways, there you go. It's called Heads Up. And uh, it's pretty fun. So you it's a good it. way to pass the time at the Disneyland lines, too. Oh, oh that's, that's a good that's how, point. That's how we found out about it. Um, like there were a lot of people in Disneyland lines, like, playing it and stuff. They were just all there playing it? and Disney, yeah. It's like a thing at Disneyland? Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Well, Ellen. Oh, there's a the Venn diagram of Ellen and Disneyland is... Okay. Yeah, you know, Ellen, she's family friendly and Yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. She suggests something, it's gonna catch on. Hey, what can I say? It's a well and built it's, app, it's yeah. a well thought out app, and it's a lot of fun. So you should check it out. It's called Heads Up. If you haven't already, uh check it out. And with that, it's time for you to place your vote for your favorite app this week. Is it Bluetooth volume control or heads up? Go to twit.to slash triple A vote 340. That's twit.to slash AAA vote 340. Heads up or Bluetooth volume control. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, See? Thank you, Victor, for the pity vote. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank Look, you. I, no, I, I feel the Bluetooth struggle. On <laughs> exactly. Where it, it, the well, because keeps... I'm not going to buy a new car, so I just put all these <laughs> dongles in my car and these adapters. So, I think I think even though the, the two apps are totally different, like that that could actually end up being a big strength for for both of them because some people are going to identify with the the quick and easy game. Some people are going to really identify with the fact that you're solving a problem. And that's Android. That's Android. So much choice. In a nutshell. Uh, all right, twit.to slash AAA vote three four zero. Flo, this was a lot of fun. This was fun. I enjoy when we get the chance to do this. Uh, we've got some pretty great episodes coming up. Got some yeah, new people booked uh, over the course of the next month. We've got to return some pretty cool people. I'm just going to leave you in suspense. We've got projects in the works. we got stuff. So you're not going to want to miss it. Uh, but until then, Flo, you're busy. What are you doing? What am I doing? Well, I'm writing. I'm doing okay. a lot of writing. Okay. Um just pay attention to me on Twitter right now at Oh That Flow. I will be posting more links to my work. And <laughs> there's my Twitter account. I'll be posting more links to my work. Uh, today I had a video go up um, on, uh, had a video go up at uh, on YouTube um, about how to set up your Samsung smart things to make a Halloween scene. <laughs> Oh, interesting. On YouTube. So, Is it in, uh, on your YouTube account? No, it's um, actually, uh, I did this um, video with David from Android Authority. And so basically what happens is he walks up to the house, the motion sensor catches him and then plays like, blinks the lights behind the zombie and plays like a scary sound. Ah! Yes. And I did all of that with Tasker and with smart things and with a connected light bulb. So just kind of just show you how you can like have some fun in the burbs with all of these smart things. Nice. <laughs> but that'll come in, that'll come in super handy. So I'm working on stuff like that behind the scenes. There'll be more stuff coming out over the next two months. So just kind of, just kind of hang out for a while while I get some ducks in a row behind just the scenes. hang out with your new just Pixel hang out. device. I'm working on some stuff. Right. And be patient. And I will be looking at the phones. I'm not sure yet where, where I'll be publishing my thoughts. Yeah. But cool. I'm working on that. Well, it, even if you don't publish them, I'm sure you'll talk about them. Oh, no, definitely. Here. I'm definitely going to come with a photo shootout of some sort. At least show. Yeah. I just need to go somewhere interesting. Yeah. Uh, business really, expense. Just not really go to Hawaii. Doing... You have my permission. <laughs> Not that well, you in that my, case, not that you needed my permission. <laughs> I think everybody has my permission to go to to uh, to Hawaii. Um, you can find me at jasonhowell.net, yellowgoldmusic.com. Big thanks to Victor for all that you do. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you for everything. No problem. And uh, and extra insight into heads up because you might have given me the edge. Uh, even though you voted for the other app, but I understand. It was out of pity. Victor's <laughs> you know, a nice you could, person. They, they kind of go together because like when the kids are playing heads up in the back seat and switching yeah. music at the same time, right. every time they switch, like the music volume goes down. <laughs> and I think with that Bluetooth music control, the music volume doesn't have to go down no more. Oh, okay. So you you children, made it work. Huh? Somehow you made it work. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Victor, for that. 
Uh, but that is it for this week. Thank you so much for watching and listening once again. If you want to get involved with the show, you can leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us an email or video mail to AAA at twit.tv. You can find us on Twitter. We are at Android Show. We have an awesome subreddit. If you go to twitaaa.reddit.com, you can find stories uh, that will be linked to or in used in the show. Vote them up, vote them down, whatever you like. Every app from every episode that we cover is listed at twit.to slash Android apps. You can go there and check out the full list and stats as well for the arena, twit.to slash arena stats. Show notes and past episodes can be found to probably the most important URL for you to remember. That's twit.tv slash AAA and our episodes appear everywhere podcasts can be found, including YouTube, iTunes, Pocket Cast, all over the place. This photo always cracks me up because we all have very distinct and different facial expressions. <laughs> One of us, well, yeah, I won't, ex I won't describe it, but if you go to our show page, you'll see what I mean. Uh, and uh, you can catch us live every Tuesday starting at around 5 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. So we're 5 p.m. now. Yes, we are. We are. Well, yeah, I mean, we still... 5.15-ish is when yeah, we Yeah, but we're, start we're moving about. We're, we're getting there. We're doing really good at being on time. So I hope you'll join us. Uh, we'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody.